Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am The Sipping Tea and today we're going to be taking a look at the RDF LT Cold War light tank. Before I start the video today, I just wanted to say thank you ever so much to everyone who has subscribed. Currently, I am at 30 subscribers, which is fantastic when you think that this channel has only been up for a little over two weeks. So once again, thank you ever so much to everyone who has subscribed. So without further delay, let's get into it. So today I would like to show you the RDF LT Cold War light tank. It can be found in Era 2 and I have found it to be an enjoyable light tank to play in a sit back and snipe sense. It's perhaps unsurprising that uh, you're hearing me say that I enjoy sniping with a tank as that is quite often the style of play that I go for. But because of this tank's lack of maneuverability in regards to turning, I would say that this tank is more suited to the sit back approach as opposed to the get stuck in there and run around the enemy and spot them similar to what the armadillo might do, for instance. The RDF is a light tank that I have played quite a lot in the past. It's once again a very good silver earning tank. Its silver bonus rate is plus 60%, the tank XP earn rate is plus 15% and finally the crew XP bonus earn rate is plus 10%. Now that does make it very effective at earning silver love earning silver cold war is very generous when it comes to that and this tank just makes it even easier to earn it now ordinarily when it's not on sale this tank is 12,500 gold if you can find it on a sale however of course it makes sense to get it then um, as opposed to paying the full price in regards to the gun statistics, we'll start with the penetration with standard rounds. It has 354 millimeters with 205 damage. With premium rounds, it has 418 millimeters with again 205 damage. Now that is quite impressive for uh, for a light tank, uh, especially in this era. I think it also really highlights what I've said before regarding the play style of this particular tank. Uh, it is better suited to sort of sitting back in maybe the medium ground as opposed to the uh, background and foreground. Um, the rate of fire, um, again of course as always this is assuming that there are no enhancements of any sort um, on the vehicle. The rate of fire is 19.25 rounds per minute. So the reload time is 11.2 seconds, the aim time is 1.9 seconds. You get six shots per clip with an intra-clip reload of 1.5 seconds. The accuracy of the gun is 0.32 and you get an ammo capacity of 72 rounds. The gun depression on this tank is a very very impressive 15 degrees which is amazing for a tank that doesn't have the hydraulic suspension. Uh, gun elevation is also a very impressive 40 degrees so this tank is a ridgeline fighter, or is certainly effective when playing that way. So I would strongly recommend you adopting that play style as uh, it's going to be quite obvious that it's going to really excel in that sort of scenario. Moving on now to maneuverability and survivability, we'll start with the survivability side of things. So the RDF has 2,400 points of HP, which is not too bad for a light tank of the era. Um, the steel concealment is 0.48, which does make it extremely stealthy, especially when you take into consideration a camo net and the appropriate crew skills. This once again really does emphasize its ability to sit back and snipe. From there we go to the engine, so it has 400 horsepower which is the equivalent of 29.07 horsepower per tonne. That translates into a top forward speed of 64 kilometers an hour with a top reverse speed of 27 kilometers an hour. 
It does have a fire chance of 12%, so a smidge higher than what I think is the usual 10%. However, probably not something you'll need to be too concerned about. The traverse speed is only 40 degrees per second, which uh, does mean that it's not the greatest at turning. Uh, terrain resistances are 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and 1.4. So again, um, it's, it's not great at uh, turning swiftly. It's not, uh, say, an Armadillo or an FV-107 Scimitar or something to that effect, but it's not awful. In the gameplay here, you can see that the, uh, the sights are quite tight, so it is a very accurate gun, uh, even at uh, longer ranges. Um, it's very impressive for its ability to be able to shoot the targets. Uh, even if they're moving at relative pace at, uh, again, a relatively long distance. Due to the wedge shape of the tank, not too dissimilar from the Swedish tank destroyers that you can see in World War II, uh, it is surprisingly good at bouncing some rounds off the front of it, which for such a lightly armoured tank, you would think would uh, not really uh, happen too often. But uh, yes, it's surprisingly good for that, I would say. Despite the gun doing relatively low damage per shot, the fact that you get six rounds, which also reload quite quickly, does mean that you will be racking up that damage rapidly. And therefore, it does mean that you can have some very, very high damage gains in the RDF LT. So, when the... RDF came out, it was more or less following on from its sister tank, uh, the G.I. Joe Mauler. Now, at first glance, these tanks are extremely similar, and if you thought that, then indeed you would be absolutely correct. They share a lot of very, very similar statistics, such as the, uh, the HP and, well, the penetration and damage of the gun. The earn rates are all the same as well. However, there are some differences. So, the RDF has a forward speed of 64 kilometers an hour, whereas the Maulers is 70. The reverse speed, the RDF, is at 27 kilometers per hour, and the Mauler is 32. So there is a slight difference there in um, mobility and engine performance, I suppose, though, of course, it's not really a major, major difference. Moving on from the differences in mobility, there is a slight difference in still concealment. The RDF is slightly stealthier than the than the Mauler, with a 0 0.48 uh, still concealment as opposed to the Mauler 0.51. Uh, signal range, again the RDF wins that with uh, 745 versus the Mauler's 610. Then some larger differences start to come in. The Mauler has a 0.3 second longer clip reload at 11.5 seconds and a 2 second intraclip reload as opposed to the RDF's 1.5 seconds. So that is quite significant when everything is added up as the RDF, uh, the rounds per minute is 19.25 whereas the Mauler's is only 16.74. So. That is quite a difference when you are throwing those shells downrange. There's also a difference regarding gun depression. So once again, the RDF's gun depression is the very impressive 15 degrees, whereas the Mauler's is 11 degrees, which is still not bad uh, when comparing it to other tanks, but it's simply not as good as the RDF. Finally, the other difference is the engine fire rate. Now, the Maulers is at 15%, whereas you may recall the RDF's is at 12%. So, all in all, I would say the RDF is the better tank. They both cost the same amount of silver. I really don't see any reason to go for the Mauler if the RDF is available. I do believe the RDF to be the superior tank perhaps the only reason why one might get the Mauler is if you want to complete the G.I. Joe collection or you just want to have all of the premium tanks the game has to offer. 
Here in the footage you can see that once again I am allergic to the premium consumables. I know that uh, does surprise and even upset some of you. Um, but once again because it is such a high silver earning tank uh, I just want to try and squeeze every last drop out of it in that regard. I've honestly really not felt I've suffered for the lack of uh, premium consumables. I think more often than not it is okay for me in, in this tank. Though of course you do you if you feel like you need um, specific consumables more than others then by all means you know go for those premium consumables they're not vastly expensive especially when you consider a how much this tank earns in silver and b how much silver cold war throws at you so again you do you in that regard in regards to equipment for the rdflt i would certainly be recommending a gun stabilizer if anything to increase that accuracy even more to make it even more of a laser beam is definitely going to be a good idea um, obviously it will also assist you when you are moving along and firing if you find yourself in that sort of situation um, advanced concealment or camo net that is also going to be very very good for this tank with it already having very good camo you might as well enhance that already impressive statistic from there it is going to be more of a battle as to which one you go for um, advanced optics would be quite good because obviously you are a light tank you are also a almost like a, a, a sniping tank destroyer light tank so being able to spot your own targets um, despite true vision being able to actually highlight those isn't necessarily going to be a bad idea um, Alternatively to that, you could always go for improved ventilation, which will of course help in a lot of different respects. Personally, I did go for vents with the RDF. I find that that is uh, a better option all round for me. Moving on to crew skills, I would say this of course is going to be a, a largely a personal preference uh, section once again. However, ones that I would strongly recommend would be Sixth Sense, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Snapshot, and also Situational Awareness. Run and Gun is a good option, as is Camouflage Expertise. Also, Green Thumb and Muffled Shot would also be quite useful. I think that more or less covers everything with the RDFLT. If you feel like I have missed anything out or would like me to mention anything else in particular in my other videos going forward, then please do let me know in the comments below. Also, please do hit that like button if you think I've done a decent job on this video. Again, if uh, you've got any sort of feedback, positive or negative please please do leave a comment below i read every single one of them so your voice will be heard if you have something to say another quick thank you to everyone who has subscribed also to everyone who watches my videos and likes and leaves a comment i appreciate you all thank you ever so much for watching my videos uh, a friendly reminder that i do have a patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos so, with that being said, thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.